Hello, I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your game and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Let me put my years of game playing, event organizing, and game night hosting to use for you. Tonight, we are answering the very important question of what's in the box. Today, we are going to take a look at King of the Dice from Haba Games. This is part of their new series of games that are not in the yellow box series. So Hoppa has a yellow box series of games, which are generally games aimed at kids. These are games aimed at an older generation of kids or adults. They're kind of like their Euro games, their gamer games thing. Uh, one of the things Hoppa is really pushing right now is to show that they're not just kids games, which actually I think is really cool. And it's something I strongly believe owning quite a few of their games, because one of my favorite things uh, when buying games for my kids is finding games that not only they like, but are fun to play with them as adults, and sometimes to sneak out of the rooms and play without them there. So I really dig the direction Haba's going with this. So full disclosure, I realize you just gushed on a bit. I do have to let you know. Um, while they did not provide this as a review copy, they did let me get a copy of this game at cost for purposes of reviewing it. So I did pay for this, but I did not pay full price for the purpose of getting to review it. First part of that review is opening it up and showing you what's in this box. So one of the cool things, I like to do this here live on Twitch, so you get my thoughts live as I'm opening it, so you get to see what I'm thinking, uh, seeing the components for the first time, same as you are right now. Plus, it's a good way for you to know if this is a game you might be interested in. So King of the Dice, a tricky competition, is a game for 8 to 99 years old, plays 2 to 5 players and plays in about 30 minutes. Uh, it says, make your kingdom thrive. Gain new citizens for your kingdom by fulfilling the various requirements on the cards with three rolls of the dice. Special cards provide you with benefits, but watch out for scoundrels and dragons. The player with the best citizens at the end of the game wins. Now, I will note I have played this game. I did a full demo at Origins. So unlike some of our unboxing videos, I know what these components are all for. There's not a lot in this box, but I do really want to show off. I love the dice for one, and I love the art. So right now it's in shrink. We're going to get to it. We are going to open King of the Dice from Haba, USA. Uh, the only thing I have here is a craft knife, hobby knife, getting through the shrink wrap. Uh, this game is by Nils Nilsson. Uh, it's not a designer I know off the top of my head. This is very light. Nice small box game. There's a bit about Nils Nilsson in multiple languages, and the illustrator. So illustrated by Gus Batts. I gotta admit, I do, I like the look of this game. Something about it says Friendly Giant to me. So we have the rule book on top, and you can see the dice and the cards there. Not a lot of components, but what do you expect from this? All right, slight complaint. Oh, bad packaging, that hurts a little bit. As a collector of games, it always hurts when I see a slightly damaged rule book. Unfortunately, some little bad packaging, nothing ripped. Nothing ripped, but a little bit of a bend there. Um, rule book's not as bad as it looks because it is in French and English. Note, this is not a Canadian production of the game. So the standard U.S. packaging comes with French and English. That's something I dig with my kids being bilingual. Though one of the things I do know about this game is it is not language dependent at all. So a tricky dice game for two to five players, ages eight and up. Um, there's a little intro story. Text is a little small, I gotta admit, for old guy eyes like mine. Readable, but a little tiny. Oh, okay, a nice big text when you're getting into the rules, though, which is a little nicer. So just a little intro box. Lots of examples, full color. Lots of examples, any of the game. So a total of four pages of rules. Not a complicated game. Uh, this is a Yahtzee-style game. I like this. A very good rule summary that shows the different card dice, com excuse me, dice combos required to get each card. And that's it. So there's the rule book. We have a really nice set of wooden dice. Uh, interestingly, not in a Ziploc bag. So we are going to grab the Exacto again. Sorry, the hobby knife. Don't want to give Exacto too much credit. So what you have on here is a six-sided die, but where each side is also colored red, green, or blue. And what you have is each number in each color twice between all six dice. I'll hold that up like that. 
these are nice wooden dice. Um, I think it's called screen printed with the colors and the pips being the color of the bare wood. They're nice. They got a, they're not heavy, but they've got a nice weight to them. Uh, then we just have, I'm not sure, Game Night Approved. I think that may be the brand. Remember I was saying how they have the yellow box games and then they have their gamers games. I think Game Night Approved might be the branding for theirs. So here we have the deck of cards. It's a significant deck. More than 52. There doesn't seem to be a quick open catch, so I'm just going to use my knife again. Kids, get your parents' help before using knives. So what we have here are building cards. So what these do is, I can't lay it out, but if you see it, you're going to lay these out at the top of, of the board, sorted by color. So there's different domains in the kingdom. Underneath those are going to have citizen cards. An example being this dashing fellow. So to get this citizen, you have to match what's at the bottom. So to get this elf, wow, I shouldn't hold up yellow. Let's go with a different color. Let's go with the dwarf. Yeah, the brown shows up a lot better. Uh, you need, let's see if you can see it there, four sixes to get this dwarf. When you get this dwarf, he's going to be worth six points. If this tile was on top of him, you wouldn't get anything. But if this was brown and you get the dwarf and he happens to be underneath the brown building, you would get both of them getting more points. So, for example, if the dwarf was under here, you would actually get nine points for completing the dwarf. I'm not going to get into the full rules. Uh, I will be doing a rule summary and a review of this game eventually. Um, so, again, you're, it, it's a Yahtzee-style game. You're going to roll the dice. You're going to get to re-roll up to three times. And you're trying to match the symbols on the bottom of the cards to collect the citizens. What I like in this game is that there's more strategy to it in that you're trying to get the citizens that match the right building. So sometimes waiting to get one may be useful. And the other thing is I like that it's also colors. So to get this troll looking dude, you need to get five reds. So it doesn't matter what the numbers are. Where this one's worth a little less points is only three greens. And then there are somewhere combinations where you need a full house. So you need three the same of one type. Uh, it is not being picked up by the webcam. I apologize. There we go. Three of one type and two of another, whether that same number or color. And then some of the citizens have special scoring rules. Now here's where it's good for an educational game teaching your kids because the fairy is exponentially worth. So it's the number of fairies times you have. So if you have one fairy, it's one times one. If you have two fairies, you have two times two. If you have three fairies, it's three times three. So you're actually teaching the kids exponents. And there's some other special ones like this dude. If you take him, you get the card next to him and so on. So we have a stack full of citizen cards. You've got a stack full of these domain cards. And then you have the fool. Anytime you can't take a card, you've got to take a fool card. They start off worth minus one point and it escalates the more times you fail to take anything. So you don't want to push your luck too hard. So that is pretty much it. You got deck of cards, a bunch of nice wooden dice that are also color coded, four page rule book, but also in French and English, and the box. That is King of the Dice from Hobby Games. Now I am Mo Tuzano, the tabletop bellhop, your cardboard concierge. Uh, you can find me all over the internet as Tabletop Bellhop One Word. If you dig hearing about games like King of the Dice, be sure to check out our podcast, the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast. You can find that on all your usual uh, podcatchers, Apple to uh, Apple Podcasts, no longer called iTunes, and anywhere else out on the web. You can find our webpage at tabletopbellhop.com, where you'll find all kinds of gaming content, including these unboxing videos. You've got reviews, you've got news, uh, con recaps from Origins, and links to our podcast. If you dig what you see on our social media feeds, on our streams, or on the webpage, it'd be cool if you went over to patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop and considered tipping the bellhop. For Tabletop Bellhop, I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop. Good night and game on.